Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Is she going to at least stop trying to touch her hair? Well, at least it started to grow. What I want to share real quick is if you haven't got your chemicals in for the day in your food and you're at work and you just feel the best thing after lunch would be to just feel like you have to pass out. <clears throat> but I must say first, oh man, this is delicious. It's funny because when I don't, when I press play, I don't look as big, but when I do, then I get bigger. Has anyone experienced this? All right, we just have to move ahead. And next, my teeth will look rotted. I'm mad. But let me tell you what, what I do do with this is it's not very often um, that we we try to stay away from the extra preservative stuff. But at this point, it's like whatever we can eat when we can is because um, we're not eating very much. It looks like it on the video, though, doesn't it? Okay, so this is the chicken flavor. There's little pieces of corn and stuff in it. And what I'm going to do is be reading a column really quickly. So I hope I don't get off track here, which I very well could. And I hope I don't is Congress criminalizes the new Testament. Uh, my husband and I are really upset about this. If you're not upset about it, I don't know where you're living. I don't know what you're thinking. Uh, I remember some conversations a year or so before my brother's uh, death, um, our arguments, you know, we wouldn't even have to see each other for five minutes. I mean, we were so like not even close to believing the same things and he would normalize things that are completely not normal or healthy for anyone in a family or society. But that's besides the point is, um, he was like, you know, the constitution's really old. I mean, some of it really does need to be uh, altered. I'm like, Maybe a couple things, but not all of it, like the savage thing, but like diving in. Okay. But he was probably anti-religious and thought he, he was one of those that wanted, wanted all the religious people to shut up at that time. I was told he found Jesus before he died. I don't know if that's true or not, but like on his deathbed, more or less. This is so delicious. I used just a little bit of olive oil. And what I did is I had some remnants of frozen broccoli, cauliflower, and carrots. I drain it and, and get most of the moisture out. I wait a little bit in the simmer. I throw in a little bit of fresh onion, a little bit. I didn't have any fresh garlic, so a little bit of powdered garlic, some uh, paprika. If you look up these spices, they can do a lot for your body. They do. I know some people just maybe sometimes think spices are just spices just to taste, to put, to taste something better, but there's actually things to paprika. I'm not a doctor. Okay. We got to get moving on because this is too important. And I'm, I erased all my stuff, but I can't take the camera and I just, let's just get this done. I can't even believe what I just saw when I press play. Look like 30 pounds went on and then my mouth looks like it's rotted out. Okay, Congress criminalizes the New Testament. Now, but this is what's important right now is this is not my column and I could, this will maybe get shut down because I'm reading his column. That's how stupid stuff's gotten. And so this is my pastor though. We periodically donated, bought books. We go to him every week. I've been trying to promote him, I know, for well over a year or even more, even when I was still having some difficulties with certain ideological differences or, or I, not even fully, really. Just You must go to his live. He has it on many platforms. If you just dive into a sermon and you see his intensity and love for the Lord, it's not. it probably isn't going to go good if you're... If you're still like licking your wounds from the world and hating God or whatever happened to you with God or what you thought was God, but it was really in some kind of twisted church that was so messed up that you got messed up and then you blame God because that's, it's a natural go-to. Now what are we doing? Okay. Okay. So this column this week and you can go there and you don't have to l listen to my blibber blabber jabber jaw. Congress criminalizes the New Testament. He published this today, May 9th, 2024. He discussed this in his sermon Sunday. If I start crying and you have a problem with it, that's your problem because I'm probably going to.
I'll lead off. Okay, this is his his thing. He's leading off. Okay. I'll lead off by quoting a brief missive by Dr. Stephen Jones on May 2nd. He wrote, Yesterday, Congress passed what is called the Anti-Semitic Awareness Act. It is a bill which criminalizes any criticism of the Israeli state of, or of Zionism. It also criminalizes any Bible passage such as Acts 4.10 which states that the Jews crucified Jesus and because the bill assumes that all Jews are Zionists, it confounds anti-Semitism with anti-Zionism. Sorry about that. Many Christians congressmen voted for this bill. Many Christian congressmen voted for this bill. I'll either go cry or I'll get intense. Well, which one? Or both. Okay, both. Call it in. What will they do when the Bible is banned? No doubt they will claim that they never intended for this to happen, or that they voted for the bill without even reading it, yet they should have known how unconstitutional the bill is, as it greatly restricts the right of free speech. And see, that's what this is about right now. You can say, oh, you religious people are too obnoxious anyways. Well, you know what? Once the free speech is gone in this arena... And I used to make some really disturbing videos back three or four or five years ago. I might have started 2018 on YouTube and shut down four or five times. Is Pretty soon you'll be wearing that mask, but your mouth's going to be stitched up. You're going to be drinking something out of a straw. Like they're going to have a little thing right here. No, I ain't messing around. They'll have you blind as a bat and your ears won't work. And it'll all be in the cause of the betterment of humanity and the environment or something. I mean, that's how insane this is getting. I'm not going to get through this. I could have read it in 10 minutes. Maybe I ain't going to be able to read it. It's going to get shut down anyways. So I can say till I'm blue in the face that this is my minister and some jerk will go on and have it reported that I'm taking someone else's information. Or, or maybe Pastor Baldwin would just prefer that I wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't visibly known to do that. <laughs> that we're on his team with Jesus. Many Christian congressmen voted for this bill. What will what will they do when the Bible is banned? This would not have been possible had it not been for the support of Christian Zionists, such as Speaker of the House Mike Johnson, who used to be a constitutional lawyer, if that's not alarming. By restricting free speech, he has betrayed all of us and is a good example of a modern Judas. Amen, Dr. Jones. House Speaker Mike Johnson touts himself as being a strong man of faith. He calls himself an evangelical Christian, yet Johnson has quickly joined the ranks of the deep state. And atheist Zionism as a big government, warmongering, anti-free speech, and anti-Christ toady, an enemy of God's ho holy word. The bill referenced above the Johnson rammed through Congress codifies into U.S. law blasphemy against New Testament scriptures. Real Christians couldn't, couldn't have any part of such sacrilege. Only the foolish ignore the words of Christ where he said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Matthew 7, 15. In a simple fashion, the Apostle Paul warned, for such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. 2 Corinthians eleven, thirteen through 15 why God hides out his mourners and his prayers and his prayers and a lot of his spiritual warriors is because we're not like other people. Jesus also told us frankly, wherefore by the fruits ye shall know them, Matthew 7 20. Because yeah, I can cry right now and the next minute we could be getting mad and tell and telling the devil where he's going and, and he's taking too many with him and that you better get to Jesus right now. By his fruits, 
Mike Johnson has proven, proven himself to be a false prophet and deceitful worker. Remember, the Anti-Semitic Awareness Act is a bill which criminalizes any criticism of the Israeli states of Zionism or of Zionism. It also criminalizes any Bible passages such as Acts 4.10, which states that the Jews crucified Jesus. And since I only have a few watchers, I don't know if anyone noticed me f f blabbering about it's not just one verse. You take that one verse, most of the Bible is about the Jews and the others trying to kill Jesus all the time. So what, hello? So you better, if you got your Bibles, you better get, you better get more and get more and then get more and then hide some and start handing them out and don't be ripping stuff out of them. You'd be ripping the whole thing out. He just wants some rice. Don't let him catch you none. And you're not getting none. Not right now. And you wouldn't get much. You can't have that. It's got a lot of stuff that's not for puppies. The only thing that you can do is have a teeny tiny sample. Teeny, teeny, tiny. Teeny, teeny, tiny. Okay. Just taking a little break here. I don't want to cry. Gosh, goodness, lords. Let's read Acts 4.10. The Apostle Peter is the speaker. Be it un no known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man... You're sniffing my bowl. Okay. According to Mike... Jo okay. Whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth the man stand here before your, you whole. Emphasis added. You should have been locked out of the room. What are you doing? You're distracting. You're a distractor. Okay. Where are you? Go get out of here. And I mean it. What are you doing? Now, if you guys didn't take the opportunity between the rains to do a doo-doo, I don't know what we're going to do to doo-doo. And I definitely don't want to do to doo-doo cleanup. It has been a really long time, knock on wood. According to Mike Johnson's bill, preachers and Christians cannot quote this verse from God's word without being guilty of anti-Semitism. Oh God, I said doo-doo and he's going to wander off. Do you guys need to try to go out? Just take a little break there. That's an intense read. It's going to get intenser too, so... Ten till 3 p.m. According to Mike Johnson's bill, preachers and Christians cannot quote this verse from God's word without being guilty of anti-Semitism. Let's not forget Matthew 27, 20. But the Jewish chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Emphasis added. Then according to God's holy word, the Jewish crowd shouted to Pilate, His blood be on us and our children. Emphasis added Matthew 27, 25. This proclamation by the Jewish mob was a public admission of the blood guilt for the death of Jesus Christ. Again, this passage of God's word is illegal under Johnson's anti-Semitism bill. Plus, Acts 7.52 records Stephen proclaiming to the Jews, Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the fur of the just one Jesus, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, emphasis added, meaning he blackened those words, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, and then the Jews killed Stephen, the first Christian martyr. This is another biblical passage that Johnson has commanded that we tear out of the Bible. And notice that the Marian of mentions close your ears, I'm gonna blow my nose. <sighs> uh. 
Notice a myriad of mentions in the Gospels where the Jews are recorded as trying to kill Jesus. You know what's really nuts about this is a bunch of my white groups, maybe not my ancestors, okay? Some of them fleed over here for other reasons. But the one group I question strongly what the heritage is on that side, but we won't get into that right now. Um, I'm going to say their persecution was for other reasons that was not quite as Jesus loving as the one side. I believe the one side had some goods in it that good, good, good people with Jesus and the other side, I'm not sure what they were doing. There's definitely some stories in our bizarro and it sounds scary. Oh, and, uh, Christ apostles are, okay. And I'm saying that because I, you've heard me say stuff about the white governments. I'm not saying white man, but I mean, this is, you guys, this is so like hypocritically insane. This is like just erasing every bit of history and everything in it. I don't agree with Thanksgiving, but if you, you know, there are people that were apparently all right on the Mayflower and if maybe they weren't part of killing the Indians. I mean, what I'm saying and using these as examples is that we take this and now they're going to shred this. And then you go over here and you say, you can't have these books and you can't have this recorded and you can't say that to this person and you can't be this way and your hair can't look like this and you can't talk like that and you can't breathe like this and chew with your mouth closed because you're a pig and whatever. Like, it's like, this is so sad for someone that is, has always leaned towards expressive arts and I was in a performing arts type of sport and just loved everything about expression and music and show your, show your gut. I mean, you know, show your guts, not necessarily, you know, but I mean, if you want to show your guts too, then show them. But like, don't force me to, to hear about your guts and what you have to say about things. And if I can tune it out or walk away, I can do that. But this, I mean, this is, en this is enraging. I mean, if you are not completely unhinged by now, how has this not caused all of us to flood to Washington, D.C.? Because we're all a bunch of cowards is what it is. We're just wonk, wonk, wonk like I'm doing. Wonky, wonky, wonk, wonk. Where's the caravans? Where's the caravans to DC? Where is their army? I did it. I did it again. I just went off the hinges and I don't think we're close to being done. And know will get erased because maybe they don't want me reading his column. That's fine. I'm almost done. I'll go through with it anyways. The passage in the book of Acts that re okay. Now I've missed stuff because I'm getting upset. This is so nuts. And even if I hadn't stayed Christianish or loving Jesus, this would still be upsetting me because it's part of the Constitution. It's why a bunch of people came to this country so they could freely express and believe what they wanted. All right, well, I'm going to just say there's a myriad of these and there's a bunch of them and the passages in the book of Acts that record the attempts. There's Mark 14, 4, 4, excuse me, 14, 44, John 5, 16, John, John 5, 18, 7, 30, 7, 32, 8, 15, 10, 31, 10, 39, 11, 57. Johnson demands that we tear these passages from the Gospels out of our Bibles as being anti-Semitic. The passages in the book of Acts that record the attempt of the Jews to persecute, beat, imprison, and kill Christ's apostles are almost too numerous to count. See Acts 9, 23, 11, 19, 12, 3, 13, 50, 14, 5, 14, 19, 17, 5, 18, 12, 23, 21, 27, 22, 30, 24, 27, 25, 7, 25, 24, 26, 2, 26, 7, and 28, 17. House Speaker Mike Johnson, a professing Christian, considers all of these Bible passages anti-Semitic and demands through law that they be banned and the people who quote or proclaim these biblical truths be treated as criminals. 
Line up the white governments then, the heritages of the white governments that killed all the Indians and all the genocides way back to the beginning of time, and we're all done criminalized. House Speaker Mike Johnson, a professing Christian, considers all of these Bible passages anti-Semitic and demands through law that it be banned and the people who quote or proclaim these biblical truths be treated as criminals. I invite readers to watch a short five-minute clip of Pastor Chuck Baldwin that he made on YouTube, and it's probably on his other networks. You go to Liberty Fellowship in Kalispell, Montana for Pastor Chuck Baldwin. He can even reference you to some other truth pastors. I can't keep floating around. I was floating. I wasn't really floating. I was been totally dedicated to this church just to feel connected to even if it's imaginary people online on the on the chat for a second during the sermon and make myself feel like I'm going to church in my kitchen with Liberty Fellowship. Is uh I invite readers to okay. It challenges and submits to Mike Johnson, tyrannical antichrist dictate will prove to all the world that their king is Caesar and not Christ. Meaning our government serves Caesar. They doesn't, does not serve God. That's so true. And he has a link here in his column and you can find his column. It's free. Thankfully, many others are speaking out against Michael Johnson's attempt to criminalize free speech in America. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts writes, Israel relocates to Washington, D.C. The U.S. Congress has become an extension of the Israeli government. We don't need a president. We have the Israel, Israel lobby. The U.S. House of Representatives just passed a bill that means prison for any Christian or anyone, for that matter, who quotes the Bible that says Jesus was handed over by Jews to Pontius Pilate to be scourged and crucified by the Romans. You know what? I'm getting blocked online. We've tried to set me up with a bunch of remote work. Some of it I'm certainly qualified for. And I think this is it right here. We're not it's not getting any easier for us. So what's what's there to lose? I'm going to I'm going to take every last one of these and I'm not going to shut up about them. So when Jesus was handed over to the Jews, I mean, is the Jewish group, and I have a little bit, there's some remnants, so go ahead, tell me I can't say it. Are you guys one of the most arrogant groups on the face of the earth? Have you not seen enough since the beginning of time with God that when you just high up on your horse, I'm not talking about the ones that found Jesus, I'm not talking about them, but just... Well, great. Thanks again, because now you're taking the whole world down this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciated. The U.S. Congress has become an extension of the Israeli government. We don't need a president. We have the Israeli lobby. The U.S. House of Representatives just passed a bill that means prison for any Christian or anyone for the matter who quotes the Bible and says Jesus was handed over by Jews to Pontius Pilate to be scourged and crucified by the Romans. The bill which which passed, it passed. Okay, this isn't in the future, fear-mongering. This passed right under our noses. Criminal. That's criminal. Criminalizes all criticisms of Israeli, Israel and Jews as anti-Semitism. If the Senate passes this bill, I suppose it will end up in a book burning of many works. He's, he's quoting from probably Paul, Paul Craig Roberts. Uh, maybe it hasn't fully went through, but or they can reverse it, but I don't know if this is a mis- Miss said, or he said this prior, it says, if the Senate passed this bill, I suppose it will end up in a book burning of many books, works of literature, including Shakespeare and the Bible. Clearly, the majority of the House of Representatives is so much enthralled to the Israel lobby that there is no hesitancy about normalizing genocide and setting the scene for the four horsemen of the apocalypse. This bill is such an obvious violation of constitutionally protected free speech that it tells us that Congress will not come to the aid of free speech as it is closed down everywhere. Will the Supreme Court be too fearful of its own destruction to rule against the bill's violations of free speech and the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment? He has two parts right here through news 
and you go here to this column because this is not going to probably download right or it's, it'll be removed. Glenn Greenwald's report is very important. Protest has become a criminal act. Freedom in America is dead. The U.S. is a police state and the police prostitutes, Christian Zionists, and House of Representatives are very proud of it. That's on Rumble. And then he has another one here about Times of Israel. Amen, Dr. Robert. Republican or Democrat? It doesn't matter. Both parties are lackeys for the Israeli lobby. Neither party cares a whit about protecting the God-given liberties of the American people protected in our Bill of Rights, and both parties have proven themselves to be the enemies of Jesus Christ and God's holy word. Both parties in Washington, D.C. are leading America into the pits of hell. We have just released my latest prophecy message DVD entitled Babylon the Great, Part 1, The Mother of Harlots, taken from Revelation 17. I am confident that Mike Johnson would want to ban this message too. Chuck Baldwin. If you appreciate this column and want to help me distribute these editorial opinions to an ever-growing audience, and he will take donations, but this is free and you can come here and read this. And if you can't afford it, then just go there and read it. At least pass it along. That's all I have for today. I was going to say something else, but that's when I just, this is when, because these videos actually got knocked down when I did this some years back. And... 2020, record 3.3 million file unemployment claims. 2020, this whole USA Today goes into a bunch of stuff about all the crap they were pulling back then. U.S. failed to keep medical stockpile well funded. Americans could see checks in three weeks. Taxes behind. Quarantine hair care for some. It's no joke. I just cut my own. No quarantine right now. What's next? Next, we're just going to, we might be seeing fire come down. Whitmer's building Michigan's plan highlights much needed road investments. I must say she did that, but I'd appreciate if she'd get the red lipstick off and stop looking like a Satanist. Report abortion to be outlawed in Michigan. Republican appointed Supreme Court to overturn Roe. Oh, don't worry. They like to kill babies here. We have tons of Africans, Americans, and ethnics here. Native Americans, they, and, and the, we still have a lot of gangster issues and gangs and, and ghetto areas. I mean, they certainly want all the ethnic children uh, dead before they get out of the womb. People who died. Okay, this wasn't even the ones I wanted. But that was, that's part of, this was 22. The one I wanted was through Rudgers, and it was for the children. It was like, please leave the children alone. And it was a big one I did, and I tried it one more time on YouTube of two or three years ago. And I was stating who the articles were from and where it came from. And some somebody that can't even handle me, have one person watch my videos, got it shut down. So that's all I have today. Um, that was way long again because I have some strong, strong, we have some strong John and I have some major, major decisions to make with the Lord. And unfortunately, I don't feel it's going to be quite what we were hoping. It might be. It might be. We might be able to just hunker down here and do what we got to do. Um, But I, 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 I wanted to stop. I was like, Lord, there's what's the point? And he's like, I kept you shut up, tied up, falsely, falsely harassed, followed around. Yeah, you were still messing up. But if they hadn't, if the police hadn't been up your butthole for about 20 years or more, they wouldn't have been. Maybe they could have been doing some real crime somewhere. Them, them, the authorities protecting pedophiles and rapists and heart and keeping you all shut down and tied up and rumored around that she's nuttier than a fruitcake. Well, part of that's a little right and part of it's not right. And in that time, in those hiding hours with the Lord, I just studied and studied, got a little off track a couple times and just really tried to figure out, Lord, what is going on? Why was I put here? And so I guess this is it. I still have to just continue and I will now, but I'm not, I'm not going to get paid to do it. And no, I won't have no money to get bailed out, but uh, I'm done. I am going to start. I will try to keep it indoors. Or find a place to go, find a place to go to do this. I mean, is it just, is it, I said this some months back, is it time for John to just start dropping me off at Washington, D.C. or 
or I just get on the bus and go there or up to Lansing or what, what Lord, what do you want from me? This just doesn't feel like this is what you want. And I can, I can sense and feel your upset about the world. I can feel it. And if I tell you guys what I get and then I'm wrong again, because what did I say? I said, we'll be lucky for all here till uh, February. And if we all are here till February, praise the Lord, right? But are we praising the Lord now? Because now they're going to knock the Bible out. When our water got knocked out. And to think that we're just sitting on probably the most plentiful well and we got to figure out how to re retap it somewhere else. It just doesn't seem like a big deal to most people, right? This wasn't quite what we had in mind, but I should have, I did know, I did know, we knew. So it's a big lesson with the Lord again. So I couldn't keep that stalker off that. It's like a little, you can't call it a hill hill, but it's, they put tons and tons of rocks over the well entry level and it's right on his stuff. And I do believe that this was shared and I believe he knew how it directed in and he, what he did have a well too. And I believe that he knew exactly what to do to do a backflow on it, to make it go. I do. And I, the thing is, is no, well, people even refuse to even investigate this and I'm not a well expert. And I know that that's what happened. But you know what? Me and John were looking, we were looking out of state again. We looked heavily. We even were driving down and around to look at, shot, at spots, but made it like a destination purpose. Like, hey, we'll go to church and then meander through this region and down, down, like down, down in Ohio, like down, you're almost to Indiana corner down there, you know, and, and some roaming around down there in the, I was supposed to say hillbilly regions, but it's just, it's quiet. It's quiet and it's spread out and it, it's, it's just a lot of it's pretty. I'll be honest. There's just only certain parts of Ohio that I would, that I consider like beautiful, beautiful, more over going towards West Virginia, down that region, uh, close to Kentucky. But a lot of the other areas, it's just like, Christ, like I thought that they did a lot of clear cutting up here. Oh my, Ohio is just like, and the other oddest part about Ohio is there's not technically a reservation. So I don't know if they'd shoved off all the natives back when, or if they all fled, but those regions where like, there was like Shawnee, I believe there was like a Shawnee sign. There was some, it was really sad. I have that thing that I guess it's considered kooky too. So when I would drive through an area or even like out here, we knew of the darkness somewhat, but that maybe it could just stay off of us. But unfortunately, a lot of times that's not how darkness works. Um, sometimes it doesn't stay on its side of the fence. So, um, so therefore Jesus doesn't stay on his side of the fence. Now that's, I don't walk around in people's property. That's, it's metaphorical. Um, although John did have to walk over to his house because he'd been over here more than once uninvited across the street. And he had to walk over there with his card and a phone number saying, leave my wife alone. This is my card. So if you have a problem with her, what you need to do is you need to contact me. And he handled this one the same way, but it's funny. They don't hear him. It's like, this was like, boop, boop, boop. Okay. So like I said, if you're low on money, now, this was already up to 279 but this is in a Mexican shop, Mexican food market. It might be for less. Now, if you just, you're so stressed and you just, you can go to sleep and you just want to fill yourself with some nice fillers to knock you right out, this is a way to do it. If you want to doctor it up like I did, mm, mwah. Mm, mwah. and yum. Okay. Love you.